Hello everyone and welcome to my second YouTube video on the Tyranid 6th edition. Thank you. Uh, this is this video has been highly requested and I am going to try to update you on some tactics that and combinations that I've discovered with the Tyranids which I think makes them one of the most competitive armies in the game. And I have to give a big thumbs up to Games Workshop for creating this new codex which just fits together so seamlessly uh, and and really cultivates the the feel of adaptation and fear and hunger uh, that that embodies what the Tyranids are <clears throat> um, HQs in general in the Tyranids the HQs are designed to fit each one is designed to fit a specific tactic or a specific style of play in the Tyranid army. Um, the reason, and, and they do this by removing the randomness from warlord traits. Each HQ has a warlord trait that's tied to its special abilities, that's tied to the type of play that it uses. Uh, which you could then make the cornerstone for the rest of the army. So, for example, if you want to hunt independent characters and have an army that does challenges, the Death Leaper not only is an excellent assassin model, it then automatically gets the Warlord trait that best fits with that, Mine Eater, which gives you plus two victory points for every independent character you kill in a challenge it kills in a challenge not all of them and and it just fits it removes the randomness and allows you to prepare the army that you want for the time that you want and that's the strength of Tyranid HQs mm. good stuff now Let's start with the um, Swarm Lord. A lot of people still bitching, whining, moaning, and complaining about the Swarm Lord not being able to get across the field fast enough. Which I've always said, it's not his job. He's not a melee unit. That's a Carnifex or something like that. He's your general. And now he really, really makes that his primary role with his basic abilities that he comes with by default. You come with Synaptic Lynchpin, already giving him an 18-inch Synapse Rage. What is that about? Once again, about being a general. But that can be increased because now you can add in the Norn Crown. That extends it another 6 inches. You're now at an automatic 24-inch Synapse Range. Is that not good enough? You can take the default hive mind power of dominion which gives another six inch range and is a default choice so you don't have to roll it giving him a 24 to 30 inch synapse range so for anyone who likes a small swarmy army that's it that's your answer uh he also takes care of the next big weakness that everybody complained about the Tyranid army and that is reserve rolls. Yeah, they have a lot of deep striking units that don't deviate and yet even that you want to land on other enemy units, but how do you get them in? And how do you make sure they come in in the order? Do you know that the Turvagon is going to come in and lay his tunnel or her tunnel and then have the other units pop out of it? Swarm Lord takes care of that with alien cunning. Plus one to the die roll for reserves. And you say, okay, plus one. Uh, whatever. Uh, still not that big of, of a bump. Okay, how about Aegis Defense Line and Comms Array, which allows you to re-roll fail reserved rolls. Aha! Now you have a plus one on your reserve roll and a re-roll of fail reserve rolls. That is huge, huge impact on the game. 
uh, which really you you have to roll pretty crappy to uh, to not get the reserves you want when you want with that combination. So what else? Again, adaptation. He then has swarm leader, which allows him to every turn cast. It's it's a psychic power essentially. It's a psychic power without perils of the warp or any risk of using it. Uh, within 18 inches of the Swarm Lord, he just automatically nominates himself or any unit and gives them Furious Charge Monster Hunter or, or Preferred Enemies. Just like that. Just boom. That one now has that. The Eldar wish they could cast Psychic Powers that easily. I mean, it's not a Psychic Power. It's just a general. But uh, again, Adaptation. Ch units changing to what they want, when they, what you need, when they need them, based upon the circumstance. That's what the Swarm Lord is about. And if all of that is not enough, he's still a Mastery 3 Psyker. So you're going to get, if you don't take Dominion, uh, other powers, which work on top of Swarm Leader. Making him just able to change your army at any point, any way you want, any time you want. And this is why you don't have to walk. And in fact, you shouldn't be walking your Swarm Lord across the table to use him as a melee unit. You're going to be keeping him back, and the enemy is going to be coming to you to say, we need to kill that Swarm Lord. And then you don't have to worry. You'll be able to use all your melee goodness, which has increased dramatically, uh, and don't have to go anywhere. So you're talking about, you know, Bone Sabers. Wow. Which confers a 4-plus invulnerable melee save. And not to mention that... <laughs> I think... Uh, if you give him... I, get, I personally give him the Lash Whip, uh, which is increases then his initiative up to 9. So now he's... A AP2, Strength 6, Initiative 9, uh, Instant Kill, Monster. It's, it's crazy. And if you use Smash, it becomes a, a Strength 10 uh, attacks. So... Yes, a uh, few people have wanted to charge him into combat, and the ones that they especially learn this when they have force weapons and they charge him into combat and find out they have to make their fear roll and then find out they have to make their also force weapon roll with a leadership of minus three uh, reduction, which typically at nine or ten, that means it's going to be a six or a seven because anybody wielding a force weapon is also a psyker as far as I remember, which means problems for them. Okay, that was my introduction of HQ and the Swarm Lord in particular. I'll probably work on the, my personal favorite, uh, which is the Death Leaper, in my next video. And after that, my third favorite, which is the, the Tyranid Prime which is going to fit in with why warriors, Tyranid warriors, are, I think, the premier troop choice, the best troop choice in the game now. Uh, they're really an elite choice as a troop choice, which is awesome. I will see you next time, and thank you for watching.